So it looks like ChatGPT released a new GPT created by them called the web browser. We're going to go ahead and see if we can leverage it in today's tutorial. Based off my experience with other types of language learning models like BARD, I'm going to see which one can search the internet the best. Welcome back to Corbin AI, y'all. So this is going to be an interesting video. I saw there was a new GPT created by OpenAI that I found in the GPT section of ChatGPT. We're going to go ahead and check it out today as I know their web browsing feature is very powerful especially in the context of when you're really trying to search up very specific questions. Also, side note, make sure to follow me on Twitter as I am putting out updates on videos I'm releasing here and also just random stuff. So check it out. Let's go and jump into today's video. All right, so obviously you need a ChatGPT Plus account here. We're gonna do web browser as this seems like the new feature and let's just see these capabilities here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a very specific question. Basically, from my understanding, and as we've seen with web browsing capabilities in the past with ChatGPT, is it's really able to like show you the web pages it goes to and also like provide sources. So this seems like pretty powerful for a couple reasons. But let's just go ahead and start with like a very, you know, specific question here, such as what are the current median home prices in Austin, Texas, and see how it proceeds with these types of questions. As you'll notice, it gives like the specific websites it's going to, the specific search queries, like very powerful stuff. And for context, in today's video, we're gonna do a breadth of different topics here. So I'm gonna try to cover a lot of different topics when it comes to searching the internet, as you see here, we got our first response though. As you may or may already know, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. The little asterisks here are the little quotation marks. It basically gives us the source for the reference, right? So for example, 424, and then we can go to that underlying website. Now here's the first distinct advantage when it comes to using a search engine like ChatGPT in the context of finding information. Let's see if I can go ahead and prove it. That. <laughs> You deal with less pop-ups, less paywalls, less like less stuff that's like kind of annoying, less ads. Like there's so much limited stuff that you don't have to deal with anymore. And you can actually just get the information you care about. And that's where I see it being very powerful in the context of searching the internet. As you may know, or as we know, when we search the internet, it is annoying going to websites and getting bombarded with ads or getting bombarded with paywalls. Therefore, this is a nice little alternative we can start leveraging here. So to prove this can get even crazier and super niche and stuff we maybe don't want to search and really find the answer for let's get a very specific question here we're going to say can you find the latest updates on intellectual property law changes in the european union and what i love about this and i said before is it just shows actively what it's doing it shows what the search query is it shows what websites it's currently on and kind of proceeds like that for reference as well sometimes these searches can take a while like it really goes in depth here like really trying to find the answer which is super cool it isn't like super fast like in 20 seconds like it's going through multiple websites through this entire search query. And as you see here, it gives a pretty in-depth answer. So the first one, obviously, it's referring to data from June 1st of 2023, November 22nd. And then as you see here, it gives all the relevant sources. What's super cool here is as you see, when we hover over it, we can go to very specific context of where it's getting, you know, certain information. Unitary patent and unified patent court. If we come over here to this we can see that this was the information reference. Now, so that being said, this is a lot of information. And honestly, a lot of these websites too have really bad UI. I mean, that's like a personal thing, I guess, user interface. But going through a bunch of websites, searching through all of this data, when we could just use ChatGPT is a very important part of why the web browsing feature within ChatGPT is powerful. But on top of that, it seems like this one was fine-tuned for the purpose of finding information and presenting it in a structured manner. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and ask a more pragmatic question that might be more specific to us. We're going to say, what skills are currently in high demand for software engineering job market? Hit enter here and see how it approaches this. Okay, so we're getting our answers here with it structured as a couple of different options. So we got generative AI, obviously, machine learning, engineering, and then each one has its own specific reference. So it seems like it's actually breaking up the sections by source. So in this context, the first one is the first source it got its information from. The second section right here is the second source. And it kind of proceeds in this type of pattern here. And it has a network error. But overall, it worked. Obviously, if I hit regenerate here, we'll probably get the same exact answer. But let's try one last question here that might be interesting. It's more personal. Where say, what is the most popular tourist destinations of 2024 accounting for recent travel blogs? Now, if you've ever done internet searching in the context of travel blogs or anything of that niche. Oh my gosh, the amount of ads you get bombarded with, the amount of signups you get bombarded with, just too much. So this is a great way to circumnavigate all of that. So I was running into some errors, so I just refreshed the chat and it seems like that really helped out here. 
Seems like the way they structured this was a little bit more congested, I'm not gonna lie here. But it looks like it does take from a broad section of the internet when it comes to searching a bunch of different articles for underlying interest. That being said though, long term in the future, I could totally see ChatGPT or basically the way we search for this type of stuff in this context be have some type of paid marketing, right? Like one of these asterisks be a different color because an individual or sorry, the company of that blog paid to have their blog show up for the underlying search. Keep that in mind. Saying that, I'm assuming that all these searches is all organic, e.g. the best results will show up in our chat. Maybe not, maybe so, who knows? All I know is that in the future, there will be some type of monetization when it comes to this as web searching could have a transition than the traditional Google search as we are used to ever since the internet was created. But if you felt like you learned something today, make sure you leave a like. Completely free. It helps me here on Corbin AI. If you like this kind of video and want to learn more about ChatGPT, more specifically, let's just jump into the GBTs. You can check out the playlist at the end here where I show you how to create GBTs, different GBTs that are fine-tuned for specific tasks and stuff of this nature. But without further ado, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.